to day two of symbolism and word roots. My name is Ms. Bailey McRae, and we're going to look at the way that symbolism is used in a poem today. I've also provided you with two worksheets to practice your root words. On one sheet, you'll be able to identify the root word just from a list of words. On the second sheet, you'll be identifying the root word in three iterations of the word in a very short passage. Symbolism, like connotation, comes from cultural significance of things. So for an example, a bee might be a symbol of pain and suffering and fear for you because you're afraid of them and they give you stings. But for someone else, a bee might be a symbol of life and joy and renewed spring. Flowers have different meanings and symbols. A rose is a symbol for love and passion, but each flower even has its own deeper meaning. White roses, yellow roses, pink, red. There's all kinds of cultural meaning attached to the different symbols in our lives. All right, day two, symbolism and word roots. Checking out that objective for the week. Again, we're doing 8.4C and 8.5D. For 8.4C, today we're gonna to focus on using roots to determine the meaning of unfamiliar words. So as I read the poem today, we'll break apart a few and then you'll have independent practice breaking down those words as well. 8.5D, we're going to focus on explaining the use of symbols and figurative language. So we'll do that in a poem. As I mentioned, we have two learning targets. So we've got, today I will explain the use of symbolism in a poem, The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. And I know I can explain it, the use of symbolism, when I score 75% on the multiple choice. So there's a few multiple choice questions attached to the common lit link that I have in this slideshow. The second part is, today I will identify 10 roots I know I can identify word roots when I can correctly match 80% of them to their definition. So I've added um, a resource with many word roots, I think at least 50, on the slide, as well as two activities for you to practice. Our definition for figurative language is words, phrases, or figures of speech used purposefully to emphasize or persuade an audience. The weekly vocabulary that we're focusing on today is symbolism and word roots. Again, symbolism is an event, object, person, or animal to which significance or meaning is attached. The example from yesterday was that there is a dove that can be a symbol of peace linked back to our illusions in the Bible. Similarly, fire can be linked to either passion and love or anger and destruction, depending on how you want to construe that and what cultural connections that you're making. We're also focusing on word roots. So think of word roots as a puzzle piece. Can we attach something to the beginning or the end of it? Words that are roots are things like form, cred, and photo. And this is the link I was talking about to open up those um, resources that you might need to do your homework. So today we're going to focus on a single poem by Robert Frost. For direct instruction today, I'm only going to focus on the first or second stanza just to explain the symbolism in this poem. However, I do have a screencast attached. You can see it here, screencast reading. That is a screencast of me reading this poem because I found the other audio versions to be very boring, to be honest. Um, and then I have a link to the PDF that I'm using. I have a common lit account, which you can also sign up as a student and you might even already have an account through your RPS ID, but I've attached the PDF so that you can use that even if you don't have your account ready, okay? I know we jumped around. so. This is the poem, the first two stanzas. The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, 
and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. So in case you didn't know, diverged means it's separated. We can break that into um, word roots actually. Die meaning two, split into two, all right? And then under growth, we know what growth is, could mean grass or something on your body. In this context, it's probably grass. Under growth, so the things that grow under other things, all right? So we're using this image on the side to visualize Robert Frost or the speaker of the poem standing at a fork in the road where two roads diverged, right? They separated, so he could go one way or he could go the other. This seems like some pretty straightforward and literal language. But when we move on to the second stanza, then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that, the passing there had warned them really about the same. So he's talking about, you've got one road that didn't seem traveled. It seemed like many people didn't take that path. Maybe you've been in a park and you recognize that. It kind of looks like there might've been a path there, but the grass has grown back. Where there's another path that he's seeing that seems to be more well-traveled, right? So you could see as far as it goes. So at the end of these two stanzas, Frost is saying, but they're really about the same. But does it matter which way he goes? If you read on in the poem, you can start to see that he doesn't necessarily mean a real road. Okay? At the end, he said he took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference. Does it really matter what road you travel on? I mean, if you're going for a walk in the park, what difference does that actually make? It's here that many people believe the roads symbolize paths in life. We can take different paths. And so some people believe that the different roads in this Frost poem symbolize different ways that you could do life. So if we think about this, the road less traveled and the road worn, the road worn, W-O-R-N, worn, like worn by feet, steps trodden black. Many people have gone that way. We can interpret that to mean that many people chose that path. Maybe that's graduating high school. Maybe that's your career choice. Maybe that's being a parent. And then in contrast, there's a road less traveled, okay? I took the one less traveled by. So that means, or could mean, take risks. Do the thing that not many people are doing. Do the thing that people are afraid of doing. That, you know, you could be that basketball star. You could make it as a rapper. Or maybe in the contrary, you don't make it as a rapper and you choose college, um, depending on what the people around you are doing. So... The roads in this poem symbolize paths you could take in life. So do remember that you can work on those three questions and the short answer by using the link in the previous slide. But also consider our review. What is symbolism? How do poets use symbolism to communicate meaning? So symbolism is attaching that significance or importance to objects, people, animals, creatures. In this poem, it was a road. How do poets use symbolism to communicate meaning? Well, Frost 
use the road to communicate that you should think more deeply about what path you choose in life. Right? Huge mind blown moment. Then we have word roots. And why is it important to know word roots? Well, perhaps you maybe you didn't know the word undergrowth when we looked at the poem, but you know that under means you it's like under something, right? Like so underwear, you wear your underwear under your clothes, right? <laughs> so undergrowth is something growing underneath other things that are growing. So if we know what word roots are, we know what growth is, we know what under is, we know that we can figure out what that word means and get a better sense of imagery, even though that may not have already been in our vocabulary. So to continue practicing our word roots, you've got root word practice one, which is sort of a breakdown of words, and root word practice two, which is um, four short passages, and by passages, I mean not even a whole paragraph, with um, different Latin word roots, and you are to look at certain words and break them down into their absolute root. It's very easy. Once you see it, you will be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she even gave us this. Okay? So if you have difficulty, I strongly recommend using your RPS tutor um, and then revisiting some of those slides if you're confused. See you tomorrow.